shall never depart from your habitation. From this service on, it shall be joy and rejoicing in your habitation. No one shall gather to mourn in your home. There shall be no more shedding of tears behind closed doors in your life. The God of heaven is your father. He's overly interested in your being settled. So today, your father will settle every unsettled area of your life. Today, your father will settle every unsettled area of your life. In the name of Jesus. 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 Lift up your two hands one more time and thank God for saying the last Sunday in the month of August. Thank him for all his goodness all over. It's never too much. We can only do a little more. Give him thanks. Now ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, speak to me this morning. Speak my way forward today. Speak my way upward today. Speak my way out of every form of unrest in my life. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The laws of nature have proved to be irreversible. How much more the laws of the Spirit of life. They are irreversible and indestructible. Nothing under heaven can make God's word of no effect. No civilization can berate the word of God. It stands above all. My ways are higher than your ways. Before you get there, my word is there. And my thoughts are than your thoughts. May no one here ever lose the real value for the word of life. <laughs> By nature, man is created to keep breathing in and breathing out. No civilization since creation has been able to alter that. Man is created to require food and water in order to remain on their feet, on his feet, nothing. No IT, no civilization, no new age can alter that. Man is created by nature to go desiccate and refresh. Otherwise, he lives under tension and dies. No matter your office in life, you must go to the toilet. May you never get to any office where you can't go to the toilet. <laughs> the number one of number one presidents in the world goes to the toilet. <laughs> and he can't go to the toilet with his suit on. <laughs> he will mess up. The law of nature is no respecter of status. No. How much more? The laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. If you are too big to repent, you'll never get saved. Whether your grandfather was saved and a pastor and a founder, your grandmother was a missionary, it won't make anything. You won't repent, you can't be saved. The loss of the spirit of life. Yes, sir. If you are not a giver, no matter your background, you end up a pauper. But when God enriches you, no devil 
can unenrich you. Whatever he does is for heaven. Now, these things are fundamental, they are basic. Somebody said when we're growing up in ministry, say, when you say anything growing up like that, it just disappeared. They say five years. They say three years. Three years came. They say five years. After five years. After, after seven years. After seven years, we won't see them again. After seven years, they kept quiet. And then they started counting. Now it's 41 plus. Yes. Or it's going to 41. Yes. yes. They'll be counting. Well, we're changing level. They'll be counting. Whatever the Lord doeth shall be for me. Abraham's wealth has been traveling from generation to generation. Yes, sir. Whatever the Lord doeth shall be forever. Shall be what? Forever. forever. Relax. Yes, sir. Ah, they have not seen flight. The kind of flight your children will under, undertake, no one has ever said it. What took you 10 years? Your children will get it cleared in one month. Today, as God settles you by his settled world, no devil or his agents will succeed to unsettle you in life. Lord, honor your word this afternoon. Let you bring healings. Let your word bring deliverance. Let your word bring breakthroughs. Let your word bring settlement. In the name of Jesus. It's done. Again, welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. And so shall it be. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. Thank you, Jesus. Beware. of attempting to amend the laws of the spirits of life. The words I've spoken to you, their spirits and their life. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the laws of sin and death. Real law. Every commandment of scriptures is a law of the spirit of life. Every instruction of scriptures is a law of the spirit of life and cannot be uttered by man's smartness or interpretation of Greek and Hebrew to anything you are not interested in. You start looking for Hebrew. When the Lord said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you, you didn't look for Hebrew. You just embrace it. Yes, yeah, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, he has forgotten that the Lord is my shepherd is the beginning. If you allow God to shepherd your life, not you on your own, then goodness and mercy will be following you as God is leading you. Amen. But when it comes to let God lead you, say, let me check in Hebrew, whether that's what it means. Amen. You check Hebrew? No. Let me check Greek. You check Greek, you say, let me check Aramaic, the original Ethiopian language. Yeah, he said, I don't think they understand it. Let me check Webster Dictionary. He doesn't want to do it. So he wants to check tight in Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic. Because he can't see himself doing it. So he needs to check a way out of it. Thus said the Lord, I've been reading it now since I got saved in 69. He's been doing me well. I don't know Greek. I don't know Hebrew. I wasn't privileged. And I'm not willing to learn. <laughs> God so loved the world that he gave me the sign. That's what I had. That doesn't need Hebrew. God so loved. You want to be loved? Like, let's stop amending the questions on the question mark, on the question sheet. Examination sheet. You change the question, you are on your own. <laughs> You write your answer of your chain question is zero already. There's no point waiting for a result. Is I don't like this question, so I change it to this. You now put a note. This is the question I changed to. Teacher, lecturer, professor, please note this answer 
is to the question I changed to. But the one you asked me, I don't like it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is still leading people today. Can I hear amen? Yes. And from the teachings of this man, you never miss out of his leading anymore in your life. Yes. When God leads, he settles the lead. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Settlement. When you get any sheep on a green pasture, it doesn't wander around. He settles there. He refreshes my soul. He terminates all tensions. Amen. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So as I keep following him, I keep pleasing him. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. His leading has brought me to my realm of settlement, realm of no fear. He prepares a table for me, he prepares for my enemies, and my cup runs over. His leading renders my enemies totally helpless. Totally helpless. Surely, in my realm of rest, only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So Psalm 23 is a decoration of the settlement agenda of God that we are led into by his spirit. Ups and downs must end in your own life today. Yeah. Tension and stress must come to an end in your life today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, but know that a natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they are only spiritually accessible. So it's not enough to be come a child of God. You must be spiritual to assess divine guidance. We must be spiritual. We can't be casual believers and experience divine guidance. Let's look at three ways God leads us very quickly. How to assess divine guidance. Number one, by the witness of the spirit. That is your spirit man receiving signals from the Holy Ghost on the way to go and the way not to go. That is voiceless. You receive as signals. Amen. We saw in Acts chapter 16, verse 7, 6 and 7, Paul was writing and he said, Now, when they had gone throughout, that is um, Luke writing, they've gone throughout Phrygia. And the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Forbidden. The Holy Ghost said, Signal, no, Asia, no, Asia, no, Asia, no, Asia, no. Signal. After they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. No, 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 no. Now, in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And now does he lead, among other things, the Spirit of God, bearing witness with our spirit. He connects with our spirit. He bears witness with our spirit. When we're on the right cause and when we're not. Paul said, the Holy Ghost bears witness every day that Jesus, I mean, Chains and bands abide me in Jerusalem. No voice, but the Spirit bears witness in every city that chains and bands abide in me 
in Jerusalem, yet he went. He doesn't have to speak to you. He sends signals to you. Signal, no, check it. No, 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 no. Go, go, stop, stop. Now move. They come by signals. And what does he need? That requires that we be spiritually alive. Amen. We must be spiritually alive. Amen. Our spirit man must be fed with might by the word of God to be able to pick signals when it comes. <laughs> One of our elders, um, a very devoted person to fasting, is he will fast 40 days, but he has attained certain age. So when I announced last year that our uh, senior citizens should not go beyond their capacity, ah, he said, Papa saw me. <laughs> because he said, at this time, after 1 p.m., he can't hear anything again. <laughs> so, if you are not, your spirit man is not fed, you can't pick signal. You can't. <laughs> he can't pick signal. <laughs> he said, I think 2 o'clock. He said, after 2 o'clock, he can't hear anything again. So whether you are praying or you are speaking, you can hear at all, and it's not deaf. But because there is no energy within the body to quicken the hearing, could they? And that's not a mean man talking. It's a man given to prayer and fasting. One of the foundation members of this church. So we know him to be a man of prayer and fasting. He said, after 2 p.m., <laughs> you can't hear anything. <laughs> so, senior citizens, we have taken the responsibility to fast on your behalf. Anytime you can't hear anything, just eat. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. God will transfer your past fastings. <laughs> and they brought it forward <laughs> to this time. Praise the Lord. So you keep feeding your spirit. That's the only food he eats. The, the spirit man feeds on the word and the word only. Secondly, to pick the signal of the Holy Spirit, you must be a man that walks in the spirit because you can send that signal at any time. At any time, T. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard, as it were, a voice, a great voice, as of a trumpet. You have to be in the spirit to pick the signals of the spirit. So if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. It's very vital. These signals will come and give direction and correction and rebuke to put us right. Number two way we are said divine guidance is through prayer of inquiries. So it means prayer of inquiries. It is not weakness to ask questions as to which way to go because we are limited in access to what tomorrow holds. But we have a God that knows the end from the beginning. So let's ask him which way to go. Let's ask him which way to go. That was the lifestyle of David. A time came, they made a blunder. Left the city and went to war and the city without any guard, without any security, without any defense. So the enemy came behind the front line and carried away all the treasurable things in the land, including their sons and daughters, their wives, all the treasures in the land. And people said, David, you brought us into this trouble, we would stone you. He was greatly distressed. But he said, Look, bring me. What did they call it again? And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue these troops? Shall I overtake? And God said, pursue for them shall surely overtake and without faith recover all. And David went at heaven's direction 
pursued them, overtook them, recovered all, and there was nothing left that was not recovered. Verse 18 and 19 of the same chapter. He inquired of the Lord. There's a way that Simeon right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And then we saw him again in 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 18 and 20. The Philistines gathered again against Israel and David inquired of the Lord. Shall I go to the Philistines without deliver them into my hands? And the Lord said unto God, to David, go up. For I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. Amazing. And he went and God confirmed this war. He found that direction through the altar of prayer of inquiry. Now, they gathered again, verse 25, the same Philistines. Verse 26, please. David again inquired of the Lord, shall I go? He said, thou shalt not go up. They got in the same place, but you are not going the same way you went. And David went after the direction of the Lord and smote the Philistines one more time. So it's not about experience. It's about making inquiries on which way to go. You never miss your steps again. It is no weakness asking questions from the one who knows all things. Always look before you leap so you don't leap into trouble. It's committed to leading you to the extent that you are committed to following him. Don't tempt God with your questions. Mean what you are asking and be willing to take what he commands you to do. Can I hear your amen? You are going places. I will instruct you. Psalm 32 verse 7. And teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. God is committed to guiding us. Let's be committed to making inquiries from him whenever we need such guidance. Number three, on how to assess divine guidance, is through a lifestyle of praise. Because praise is our covenant guaranteed access into God's presence. Our God inhabits the place of his people. And we assess his guidance in his presence. Thou will show me the path of life, Psalm 16 verse 11, for in thy presence is fullness of joy. On your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Anytime you are coming, come into his gates with thanksgiving. Psalm 104, Psalm 100 verse 4. And into his courts with praise. Be ye thankful unto him and bless his name. That's our covenant access to his presence. And with the we assess the path of life in his presence as we come with fullness of joy and appreciation of what our God is doing. More money won't help you. It will only mess up your case for you. Complaining will only complicate your matter. Always come with a heart of gratitude. Nobody can pay for what God is doing for him or her. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. Keeping watch over you and me. Give him thanks. He's the one that serves food on your table. He prepares a table for me. There are people who have money, but they can't eat. But he prepares a table for you. 
in the presence of your enemies. And it causes your cup to run over. Rendering your enemies helpless. We must remain thankful to keep assessing the next step to take in life. David, an addicted thanksgiver and present covenant child, had no problem hearing from God anytime he needs to. The word says in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 and 30, Thou shalt have a song as in the night when the holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goes with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Jacob. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. And the Lord will open up a sea in the midst of praise. So let it become your way of life. And access to divine guidance becomes natural, natural. You are not coerced. You are not putting pressure on God. You are not bombarding the gates of heaven. Just stand on their property covenant platform. And then you'll be hearing that. We saw Elisha call for a ministry. There was crisis in the land. And he said, bring me a ministry. And she began to play. The hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and showed the way out of that trauma. 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. There shall not be rain, there shall not be wind, but the ditches shall be filled with water. And he said, Thus said the Lord, verse 16, You shall not see rain, you shall not see wind, verse 17 now, yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drain both ye and your cattle and your beasts. As the minister began to play, God's voice sounded. Just remain naturally grateful. Let it become your new addiction. And signals from heaven will be passing through without stress. From henceforth, no one here shall miss his steps anymore. It can be costly to be displaced. It's pitiable to be displaced. You look around displaced people, there is so much frustration. You are pulled out of your home of comfort. You are now living under a tent. My God. You're now carrying plastic plate for food to be shared. And they measure two, two, two spoons of rice to your table and share one piece of fish with ten others. It's enough to kill people. It's horrible to be displaced. And when you are not guided, it's very cheap to be displaced. My prayers are the one who suffer the trauma of displacement in this place. Yeah. And they tasted not when he led them through the deserts. He brought forth waters for them from the rock. He cleared the rocks also and the waters gushed out. If they have happened to me, their peace will have been like a river. That's God speaking. Isaiah 48, verse 17 and 18. Thus said the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel, I'm the Lord, thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou had hearkened to my commandment. Then had thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. You let God lead you. Your peace flows like a river. Your peace flows like a river. You are not apprehensive. You are not anxious. You are just settled when you allow him to lead you. May that become everyone's experience beginning from now. 
Now, let's look at two biblical proofs of being led by the Spirit. When the Spirit leads, we are endued with the inner drive to pursue that leading. We are empowered within to pursue that leading. Passion begins to burn within us to press in that direction. When God leads, he empires the lead to go in the direction of his leading. No one ever drags being led by God. When there's a drag, it will be because the time is not yet or you haven't gotten the commandment correct. But when God speaks, supernatural passion comes alive within that puts such individuals on their feet. And the Spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and set me on my feet for the wrong. Ezekiel 2.2 2. Comes alive. He called Abraham and he walked out without any feeling. The spirit entered into him, got him on his feet and he was on his way. He called them circumcised or the male born in your house. Abraham got up on his feet and went ahead as soon as God left. Now circumcised your only son for a burnt offering unto me. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. When God speaks, the spirit enters that sets the individual on his feet for a run of his life. For a run of his life. That is characteristic of every guidance. God called Jeremiah to, as a prophet to the nations, to pull down, to root out. And I said, look, this insult is too much. I will not mention or speak in your name anymore. But his word was like fire in my bones. And I could not forbear. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. So there is an environment that comes along with every divine guidance. The same day God said, Arise, get down to Lagos, raise me people. Somebody was deployed here, was sent here that same day. That same day. That same day. God said, It will be this tabernacle within one year. The following day, we arrived here, started drawing the roof. Not pre plan, no premonition. When God guides, He empires the guided yes, to get on His feet and run. You never miss your steps anymore. Amen. God delivered this mandate on the 2nd of May. By 6th of May, we gathered the people. I was still under the fire of that drawn out vision. By 29th, we flagged up the fellowship. Same month. Amen. When God sends, when God guides, he empires the guided to get on his feet and give it a run of his life. Somebody's told is changing. Amen. God said he would double the number of cells in this church this year. Mm. We gather together, fired up a se seminar put some data together of people who are doing very well among us in their cell replication and then got on fire. By the last count, we have crossed 16,500 new home sales this year. It's as if we are starting for the first time in life. When God sends, he empires the guide to get on their feet and give it a run of their life. 
passion, internal burning fire is one of the proofs of being guided by the Spirit of God. Number two, another proof of being led by the Spirit is divine protection. When God brought Israel out on the way to the promised land, he led them not through the way of the wilderness, although that was short. Exodus 13, number 17. But he led them by the way of the Red Sea. The way of the desert through the Red Sea. And God made a highway on the Red Sea. And destroyed the forces pursuing them in the same sea. And God said, he will send the angel before them to keep them in the way that he led them until he brings them to the place already prepared for them. When God leads, he protects the led. He defends the led. He secures the led. This is supposed to be a dungeon of evil where this church is today. We are both sung like human, with human voices, according to their story. But we came here as led by God, and He literally dislodged all those forces as if they never existed. Here, bots were dropping without catapult, without gunshot. You just drop and crash, just drop and crash, just drop and crash. Because he led us here. This is the place. When God leads, he protects, he secures, he preserves the land. No one's life here shall be a mess made for the devil. May you ever remain guided on his path for your life. May you never take your own life in your own hand. May you depend on God for continuous guidance. Yeah. He said, the Lord shall guide thee continually and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. When God guides you continually, he makes you like a watered garden. He satisfies your soul and drought. You become like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. The water of life has never failed in this ministry because we are constantly guided. We are just guided. We are not here because we want to be here. God knows I don't want to be here. But when he said this is the way, way to be, I surrender. We delight, not coerce, not okay, let's see what God will do. When God leads, he commits his integrity to back up the lead. You never misinvest your energy again. Yeah. You never misinvest your resources again. Yeah. You never regret any investment in your life again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lift up your right hand and thank God for showing you the way to assess his guidance. Thank God for the teachings of the month. Thank God for the light to have caught. And thank God for putting them to work. Thank God for the grace to put them to work. Thank God for the grace to put them to work. Thank God for the grace to put them to work. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Very quickly, today is a covenant day of settlement. And I'm glad to let you know it is your turn to be totally settled at last. Yeah. Every unsettled area of anyone's life in this service shall be supernaturally settled today. Yeah. God will settle your yet-to-be-settled marital destiny. 
God will set to your family life that seem to be in shambles. Yeah. God will restore and set to your career. Yeah. He will restore and set to you in your business. Yeah. I said earlier, every parent wants their children settled. A to Z, one to the last. Everyone. Abba, Father, it's my turn to be settled. Abba, Father, it's my turn to be settled. If your earthly father knows how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will God give good things to them that ask him? Every earthly father wants their sons and daughters settled in their career, in their business, in their health, in marriage. They want their sons and daughters settled in every area of life. And God is saying, I want it much more than any earthly father may want it. So today is declared your day of settlement at last. Today is declared as your day of settlement at last. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Numbers 11 and verse 28. He said, The God of all grace, after you have suffered a while, establish, strengthen, and settle you is the God of settlement. First Peter 5 and verse 10. Your father is the author of settlement. Now, tell me what devil has power to answer to you. So today, your father will show up and say to you finally. Your father will show up and say to you in all areas of your life finally. In Psalm 119, verse 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So when you subscribe to the settled word, it commits God's integrity to settle you. Settled in heaven forever. The word of God settles people. In all areas of life where we apply the wall to our steps. In Psalm 119, verse 165, the word says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall destabilize them. Nothing. I'll say to them, they love my settled world and have committed me to say to them, nothing shall succeed to unsettle them. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. And so he said in verse 29 of Matthew chapter 11, come and learn of me. For I make a lonely heart and you shall have rest for your soul. So he said to us by his word. It's not enough to come, but also come and learn of me, and you shall find rest. When you come, you become a candidate of rest. So when you are born again, you become a candidate of settlement. But when you come to learn, you find the reality of settlement. To learn what you must do, 
to experience your realm of settlement. God is out here to settle you in your health. Settle your children in school. Settle them in their career. Settle them in marriage. Settle you in your business. Settle you in your career. When you subscribe to the settled world, you have provoked the God of settlement to settle you. In Psalm 89 verse 34, my covenant will I not break, nor alter those things that have gone forth out of my lips. Every time you engage with your demand of scriptures, you have committed the covenant keeping God to confirm it. What must I do to experience settlement in all areas of my life? Number one, be born again and remain so. Be born again and remain so. At new birth, Jesus comes into your heart to be resident with you. It's Jesus in your boat that speaks peace to the storms of the sea. His name is the Prince of Peace. So when you are saved, he comes to be resident in you as your fountain of peace. <coughs> My peace I give unto you. So when you are saved, you become beneficiary of his peace. So, there can be no settlement for the unsaved. No matter how smart they may appear to be. The Prince of Peace, one source. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. <coughs> We've never had crisis here 40 years. We've never expressed tension on this pulpit 40 years. We are not faking it all. The Prince of Peace is resident here. Amen. So when he becomes resident in your heart, the peace of God that people cannot explain forever begins to manifest in your life. Amen. So a new birth is not a religious identity. It's an experience that only those who are born again can tell how sweet it is. So you must be born again and stay so. And then you become a candidate for settlement. Now, you begin to manifest your settlement by observing the following three issues. Number one, Pursue after righteousness as a way of life. For blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. They shall be filled. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Why? The work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. Isaiah 32 and verse 17. The walk. So there's a walk of righteousness. Not a walk, not one should both. There's a walk of righteousness. The walk of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. Eternal settlement. Quietness and assurance forever. No apprehension. Quiet and assurance. The walk of righteousness shall be peace. The effect shall be settlement. Can I hear your amen? amen? 
God will say to you. Amen. Beware of this teaching going around that you don't have to do anything. You are just God's righteousness. Whether you are a thief, you are God's righteousness. I mean, uh, beware, beware. Stop redrafting the exam question. With all this legend in the world, have you ever seen Ima ears come to this point? Never, never. <laughs> if you have a child that's born today and he jumps up on his feet, he says, I'm going to town. Won't you run? <laughs> There's a process. It can't be altered. Please note, anybody who claims a hold on any truth, let him prove it with his life. Paul, who said most of the things that people don't get about, said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, don't be deceived. Know you not that the unrighteous is inherited in the kingdom of God? And he listed what he calls unrighteousness. So it's not that somebody now comes and begins to redefine it from Greek, from Hebrew. No. no. Know ye not that the unrighteous is inherited in the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither adulterers, idolaters, thieves, effeminate, drunkards, you know, we shall hate the coming of God. And such, wow, it has to become past tense. Some of you, but ye are cleansed. Hallelujah. You are sanctified by the Spirit of the Jesus. Lord. So we just must know that. Without the fear of God at work in us, we are not entitled to settlement. For there is no peace for the wicked, saith the Lord. Isaiah 42 verse 8. You want quietness and assurance forever? Then go after the fear of God as a way of life. It's a battle. But it's a winnable battle. He said you, are not, you have not yet strived unto blood, striving against sin. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 4. So it's a fight. It's a flee. He didn't say explain. Flee from all righteousness. From all unrighteousness. Flee. Abstain from all appearances of evil. He that has this hope in him purifies himself. He said, You can't do anything to sanctify yourself. Just keep going. My God. You want to be settled? May the fear of God. Your new way of life. And you not only be settled for now, but you'll be settled for life. Your children, children will enter into that settlement. Yeah. For blessed is the man that feared God, that delights himself greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be imparted. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. That's transgenerational settlement. On the basis of the fear of the Lord. Don't be deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. First John 3 7. So there's a doing of righteousness. Not just appropriating righteousness. There's a doing of righteousness. I pray that no one here will miss his place in heaven. How many want to make heaven here? Let me see your hands. You know no one will make heaven with, with sin. Including all liars. So, my God, it's time to wake up. Unto righteousness and say not. It's time to wake up. Paul said, another am I perfect? But one thing I do, I press on. I press on. I can't carry this luggage alone. I press on. I press on. I must make it. I must make it. I must make it. I must make it. The righteous man may fall seven times, but the Lord is in him up again. So you must press out of everything that pleases God until he gets you there. Can I hear your amen? amen? Now, those who are pressing are not getting it too much. Imagine those who are no longer pressing. They are overwhelmed by it. He sits on them. Can come out tomorrow and say you divorce your wife, and come out the next day and say I've, I've married another one, and after some time that one even was worse than the other one. So I've divorced. <laughs> you know, because life has to be on it. Yes. 
No. No. Caution. For there shall be diverse doctrines of devils in the end of time. The Spirit speaks expressly. That is no doubt. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. He said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. He doesn't want to me to make heaven, so he wants to stand in the way. He won't stand on your way, he won't block your way today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Number three, as we round up. Be committed to building your faith. So as to keep warding off all the forces and darts of the wicked against your settlement. Build it up. When the storm shake you, he say, I see that you have no faith. When you are troubled by the waves of the sea, O oh ye of little faith. So, it's important to build our faith against the storms of life so we can challenge it when he raises his ugly head. We all have a measure of faith. You do nothing about it, it becomes no faith. It's burnt off like candle. You little about it, it becomes little faith. You do much about it, it becomes great faith. You do much more about it, it becomes very great faith. You engage, you invest much, much more, it becomes faith of faith. We are just tired. Stop there. Peace be still. You speak like the master. By virtue of the level of faith at work in you. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen. Somebody's story has just changed. Amen. And we build our faith by the word. Amen. Faith comes <coughs> by hearing and understanding the word of God. Faith also comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So it keeps bringing your way the things that apply to the moment amen. when you are challenged. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Ups and downs comes to an end in your life today. Yeah. Ups and downs comes to an end in your life today. Yeah. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loud and yeah. Finally, renew your covenant of stewardship. And for those who are here to enter, enter into a covenant to keep serving God with all your heart and with the whole of your desire. It's not a mechanical thing. When serving God becomes your new way of life, all run rest becomes your portion. Let's read from Second Chronicles chapter 15. And verse 12. And they entered into the covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they are sworn with all their heart and sought it with their whole desire, and it was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. That rest lasted for 15 undisrupted years. As long as they kept that covenant, the rest continued. And then there was a shift and the rest was terminated. In the 35th year of King Asa. As long as we retain our covenant to make serving God our way of life, to make God our priority for living, the rest continues. All round rest continues. Many, many people in this church worldwide 
are operating in that realm today. All round rest as if nothing is happening in the environment. You hardly can locate smiles on faces today across the seas of Nigeria, but in the body of Christ, you find people not just smiling, but their mouth filled with laughter because of access to their realm of settlement. Access to their realm of settlement. I entered that covenant in 1976. It's 45 years now. I have not had one occasion to rethink. There is no way under heaven I could be living the life I live today without that covenant that he gave me privilege to assess. It didn't force it on me. I entered into it myself and documented my entrance. So it wasn't assumed. The original paper I wrote, I have it. We once printed it, the original script handwritten and the printed one. It was a conscious entry. It's not a guesswork. Discipleship demands renunciation. I wrote. If at any time you call on me to ab abandon everything that I may have, I will not even complain or murmur. Simple. Matthew's at three overwhelmed my soul. I entered into that covenant, which brought me into the realm of eternal rest. Rest, 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 rest. So I never knew when to the right exam in school. God is my witness. Talk less of praying about it. I never ask him that when are you writing an exam, let me know. Because I don't know what to do about it. Rest. 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 I've never gone borrowing 40 years. Please help. Please help. I've never had to pray for food once. This rest is available. All you need to do is to take responsibility and enter into that covenant. What a church we have here, sir. People love their father with all their heart. But I've never been a burden on one. One. One forever. One person. One. One. I would rather trick than collect their car from them. He brings you into the realm of re rest. Re rest. Now, my prayer today is that that realm of re rest becomes your portion. Amen. Now, beware here in Africa, one road does not lead to the market. That's their philosophy. You come to church in the morning, you go to native doctor in the evening. The sorrow of them that hate after another God shall be multiplied. You never get said to become multiplied on settlement. You just, you multiply your unsettlement. If God is not enough for you, go, my friend, go. Go. Don't play games. Go. Go. How long will you be between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If it be bad, follow him. Don't waste your life. For the sorrow of them that go after another God shall be multiplied. He's a jealous God. Many are not settled because they are constantly working against that settlement. By going after another God. It's my mama. And I said, uh, hey, what can I do? It's my grandmother. Good. Don't let your grandmother grind your life. Now you have seen the light. You are in darkness then. You have seen the light. Proof that you are a child of light. Can I hear your Amen. amen. I've not added one thing to Jesus. And I would rather die than add one thing to Jesus. I've never gone hunting for prophecy. Please, prophecy over my leg. No, 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 no. This book is the most sure word of prophecy the in the Bible. The sure. What can somebody do, say to me and I will not be shaking me around? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You want to be settled? Settle with God. Hello? One family in Kaduna shared the testimony in 1986. Finally, we settled with God. And God settled us. They had eight miscarriages on the road. They've done everything they could do. Nothing worked. He said, finally, we settled with God. 
their two sons are graduates of Covenant University today. Come and give the Lord praise. God will only settle those who choose to settle with his settled word and settle with him as their God. Amen. God will only settle those who settle with the settled word. What the word says to do, you are doing it. And settled with their father, the God of all settlement. There is no better place to go than God. I said to God to show myself to me whatever you cannot do in my life. Let it remain undone. But for me to go and buy to a graven image, God forbid. Whatever you cannot give me, may I never have it. I've settled. Whatever you can't, wherever you can take me to, may I never get there. May I never get there. May I never, what am I doing there? It's not safe for me. It's time to choose. To settle with the settled God and settle with your heavenly Father, the God of all settlement. And then, like a dream of the night, you find all distress in your life disappear. That shall be your experience. Yeah. But for any agent of the devil behind any form of settlement around your life, judgment comes upon their life today. Your case is settled. Yeah. Your case is settled. Yeah. Your case is settled. Yeah. Your spiritual life is settled. Yeah. You'll never be found looking here and there anymore. Yeah. The Lord said to me, you have two eyes. I said, yes, sir. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? I tried. It didn't work. He said, any time you are looking onto man, never claim to be looking onto me. But if you look up to me, you'll never be ashamed. Psalm 34, verse 5. You look unto me, you'll never be ashamed. He settles those who look only unto him. He said, my soul, hope thou in God, for thy expectation is from him. When God becomes your only source of expectation, he will say to you, a double-minded person is still in all his ways, let him nothing shall receive anything from God. It takes absolute faith in God to enter into your rest. And you are entering there right now. Yeah. You are entering there right now. Yeah. He said they could not enter because of their own belief. But wake up. Build your faith, your absolute faith in God. And we'll bring to your realm of rest. Today marks a new dawn in your life. Yeah. In closing, Jeremiah 29 and verse 7. The word says, And seek the peace of that city which have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto God for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Nigeria has been going through the trauma of unsettlement for years. All the agents of the devil behind the unsettlement status of Nigeria <coughs> shall be visited with divine judgment. Yeah. All the agents of bloodbath in Nigeria hide under the guise of the guys of Fulani Hartsmen. I know how much a cow says, and we know how much AK 47 says. Yes. How many cows will you sell ah. to buy? I mean, how many cows will you sell to buy? AK? They are given That's true. by a number of people in authority. May the blood of every slain Nigeria yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. begin to taunt yes, at them right now. Yeah. 
The plan is to see how many can chase away from Nigeria. That's the plan. But they will be gone. Amen. Everyone involved in this bloodbath of nearly seven years will pay for it with their lives. Whether in power or out of power, in the name of Jesus Christ, unto whom has been given all powers in heaven and on earth, I declare every one of them unseated. Many will sleep and not wake up tomorrow. Many will go blind overnight. Many will wake up tomorrow crippled. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Psalm 7 and verse 9, all the way to 16, this scriptural verdict will be invoked in the camp of the enemies of Nigeria today. Yeah. Oh, let the we come on, let's sit together now. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just for the righteous God. Try the hearts arrange. Verse 10. My defense of God which severed the upright in heart. Verse 11. God judged the righteous and God is angry. Now, listen to me. To be happy with the wicked makes you a wicked. God is angry with the wicked every day, including today. I decree that God's anger be vented on the wicked. Now verse 12, come on now. He said, if he turns not, he will wet his sword and has bent his bow and made it ready. Verse 13, he has also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordains his arrows against the persecutor. Verse 14, Behold, the traveler with iniquity and has conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. Verse 15. He made a pit and digged it and is fallen to the ditch which he made. Verse 16. His mischief shall return upon his own hair and his violent dealing shall come upon his own pay. The generation of every agent of the devil troubling the peace of Nigeria we pay for it. From this moment onward, they shall not know rest. Calamities will before them in rows. In the name of Jesus. Why? In the peace of the nation lies your ever flourishing peace. Therefore, my God, we trouble all that trouble this land. Yeah. All that must remain in power by all wicked means, heavens will visit them, will visit them with judgment. fraud stars in the corridors of power making the destiny of many heavens will visit them with judgment <laughs> all the ones who cannot see the wickedness because they are partakers of the rewards of unrighteousness heavens will visit them with judgment <laughs> stand to your feet Your settlement has finally come. Amen. Everything against your settlement comes under judgment today. Amen. Whatever is out to displace your place in destiny comes to an end here today. Amen. Lift up your two hands and thank God for showing you the way to your settlement. Thank God for showing you the way to your settlement. 
thank God for showing you the way to your settlement. Thank God for showing you the way to your settlement. Your case is settled. Finally, finally, your health is settled. Yeah. Finally, finally, I settled your career. Yeah. He has settled your family life. Yeah. He has settled your marital destiny. Yeah. He has settled your age of fruitfulness. Yeah. He has settled your spiritual life. Yeah. You'll never be found looking here and there anymore. Yeah. God will more than enough for you any day. Yeah. Your eyes shall not see evil anymore. Yeah. Anyone that dares you from today touches the apple of God's eye. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. The troubles, troublers of Nigeria, they are troubled by heavens today. This week, it shall be clear that God has visited the camp of the enemy. Yeah. People are killed daily in this country. Ritual killing is on per second, per second. Mm. Many haven't come to know the truth, so they are just trapped. Multitudes in, in the valley of decision, they are just being destroyed like chicken. For anyone that's a part of shedding the blood of an innocent person, <laughs> I decree their end today. Yeah. I declare none and void all diabolical forces that are at work in this nation today. Yeah. I decree divine judgment against the Fulani Hartsmen. The angels of God begin to trouble them from now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated, please. Please get seated for a moment. Now, like I mentioned, new bath is your covenant entry into the realm of settlement. Until one is born again, it's not a candidate for settlement. We live in a troubled world. The only way out is to come out of that kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of light. So wherever you are this afternoon, you want to say, yes, Jesus, build me out of this kingdom of darkness. I want to be translated into the kingdom of, in your kingdom of light. Wherever you are, you like me to pray that prayer with you, to be born again, to have your sins forgiven, to have your name written in the book of life, by accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, please stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'll be praying for you right there, where you are. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Many more getting up wherever you are, get up on your feet right now. Jesus loves you. Amen. Please remain standing. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Wherever you are, stand to your feet and I'll pray with you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. You want to reconnect back with your Heavenly Father? Please stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you in a moment. And it will restore you back and restore to you the joy of salvation. Amen. All of us who are standing both for the first and second call, please bow your heads for a moment. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Lift up your right hand. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Say it loud. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. 
that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I now proclaim you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I will serve you the remaining days of my life and make heaven at the end of the day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these special souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. Amen. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. You will never step back into darkness anymore. Amen. I declare you today by the verdict of the word as sons and daughters of light. Amen. Darkness shall not overrun your life anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Grace to live the overcomer's life. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. 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 Please complete those forms and pass them on to the church officials around with you. And be reminded of the Universal Foundation class that holds every Monday. I want to believe that God will empower you to live a triumphant Christian life by attending two Mondays only. One and a half hours each day, 6 to 7.30. And we'll tell you which one is closest to where you live. We have them in about 700 locations. And you will be glad you did. Please stand to your feet, everybody. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I set a seal of settlement on your life today. Yeah. You will hear news of your settlement this week. All forces against your settlement are brought under judgment today. Grace to maintain your part of the covenant of settlement. Receive it now. In a moment, lift up your two hands. Let all those who have entered into this covenant before renew that covenant today. Jesus, I renew my covenant of making you my reason for living the center of my life. For those who have never entered into it, enter into it right now. It is the covenant of all round rest, the covenant of settlement. It gave them rest round about. That settlement. You shall serve the Lord your God, you shall bless your bread and your water. That settlement. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, their years in pleasure. That settlement. Lift up your two hands.